Good morning. Today we shall talk about partial redundancy elimination, a classic compiler optimization. The material in these slides have been taken from a course uh, by Keith D. Cooper and Linda Torxen that was given in 2011 and it was called Lazy Code Motion. I chose to use partial redundancy elimination as an example in this course because this optimization uses several data flow analysis, like those we had seen in previous classes. I will be presenting the algorithm of Knup et al. that was published in PLDI 982, but that paper is a bit complicated, I think. So I shall use the notation that was later invented by Dreschler and Stato one year later. Partial redundancy elimination is a compiler optimization, meaning that it reduces the number of operations that a program performs during its execution. To understand it, let's analyze this program. What is redundant in this code? Could you optimize it? And if yes, under which circumstances is the optimized program better than its original version? Before moving on, you can stop the video and think about these questions. So, here on the left, we have an optimized version of this program. Notice that in this new version, the operation B plus C runs only once, regardless of the path that the program takes. In the original program, this operation would be computed twice. So, even though the program on the right is larger, that is, it has more instructions, it's likely to be faster. Let's look into another example. This time we have a loop. Can we spot what's redundant in this program? And how could you optimize it? Again, you might want to stop the video and think about these questions. As you have seen, there are plenty of questions in the course and it's always a good practice to stop the video and try to figure out the answer for some of them before we talk about the answers. So the computation of B plus C is invariant. That means that it always yields the same result. So it would be pointless to recompute it whenever the loop runs. We could move it outside the loop. But is this new program on the right always better than the program on the left? By better, I mean uh, faster, it runs in less time. In this case, the optimized program is not always faster. Imagine that the loop does not execute. In this case, we would have to run the hoisted statement anyway, even if we did not enter the body of the loop. So this optimization is not performance safe, but would it be possible to modify the loop so that we obtain performance safety? The answer is affirmative. We can do something called loop inversion. In practice, this code transformation changes a while loop into a repeat loop. But because the repeat loop runs at least once, we will need to surround it with a conditional test. As an example, let's try to transform this loop into a do-while loop. Its CFG is here on the, on the right side. Notice that it has three instructions, the branch, the assignment, and the go-to. And down the figure, we have the transformed loop. Basically, we have a do-while loop, enclosed within a conditional branch. The new CFG has more instructions, but notice that the loop itself has less instructions, only two, while before we had three. Now, let's talk about partial redundancies. There is a partial redundancy in this program. Can you figure out why we say that this redundancy is partial? The redundancy is partial because we only have redundant code running if we traverse the left side of the CFG. On the right of the figure, we have a new program, this time optimized. We have removed the partial redundancy by moving it up the CFG. Now, each computation of B plus C happens inside the branch. Notice that depending on the CFG, it can be very difficult to eliminate partial redundancies. For instance, there are partial redundancies in this program. Can you spot them? 
To eliminate the redundancy, we could move the computation of B plus C from block D4 to block D2. But would this transformation improve our program? Well, um, not really, because now we can have a useless computation of P plus C along the path that goes from D0 to D2 to D5, for instance, following this path here. One problem with this program is that it contains critical edges. This is a term usually used in the compiler's jargon. A critical edge is an edge that links a block with multiple successors to a block with multiple predecessors. In this example, we have a critical edge from D2 to D4. We could remove this critical edge by splitting it into two edges. In this case, we create a new block called D6 in this example and add it to the, to the program after D2 but before D4. And now we have a place to insert the partially redundant code. We can move it from D4 to D6. Now the program is performance safe. We are not introducing potentially useless computations. However, there are redundancies that are very difficult to remove. An example is here on the left. There are redundant computations of B plus C. Can you spot them? But notice that these redundancies are partial. In other words, there are paths in the program where the computation of B plus C does not happen. It would be complicated to eliminate these redundancies because we would have to duplicate parts of the program. In this figure, we have a new version of the program, but with replicated paths. In this new version, we can eliminate the redundancy. But this is pretty difficult, and we will not consider this kind of transformation in the rest of this class. The algorithm that we will see, called lazy code motion, does not insert new paths in the program. We can just assume that we can break critical edges. We start this algorithm in the next video. Thank you for watching thus far.